Within the gripping storyline of the Curse of Oak Island, determined archaeologists labor ceaselessly to solve the enigmatic artifacts and hidden treasures buried deep within the island. The show plays out like a gripping narrative, following the team's steadfast determination to discover Oak Island's mysteries in spite of innumerable obstacles, historical riddles, and confrontations with the fabled curse thought to be protecting the elusive riches. Every episode takes the viewer on an engrossing trip filled with exciting discoveries, unanticipated obstacles, and a captivating blend of historical research. Watchers are glued to their chairs, waiting impatiently for the next clue in this never-ending search, as the crew struggles to overcome the island's mysterious past. With an interactive experience, Season 10 entices viewers to follow the team as they delve further into the mysteries hiding beneath Oak Island's captivating story. For more than 200 years, people have searched for an exquisite treasure on an island in the North Atlantic. So far, they've discovered a stone slab with bizarre symbols engraved into it, man-made workings from medieval times, and a lead cross with a possible connection to the Knights Templar. Six men have died this far while attempting to unravel this enigma. According to the mythology, one more must die before finding the fortune. Notwithstanding the freezing North Atlantic weather, another appealing dawn is here on Oak Island for brothers Rick and Marty Legina and their teammates. Dumas contracting limited representatives are now cleaning up and planning for renovation. The final ten feet of the garden shaft, a strange building located in the famous money pit. Although the decomposing feature is just 82 feet deep, Rick, Marty, and the team have discovered a number of fascinating signs that point to its connection to the previous money pit. These include date results from wood fragments, which suggest the structure could have been built as early as 1735. Even more unbelievable is the fact that scientific evaluation of both wood and water samples collected from depths greater than 50 feet has discovered high trace levels of gold. One month ago, the team began drilling a core about 20 feet west of the garden shaft in a location known as the Baby Blob. Geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner and hydrogeologist Dr. Fred Michael estimate the Money Pit Treasure Vault is 80 to 120 feet underground. Incredibly unusual, the crew discovered a tunnel at a depth of 95 feet that not only has high trace evidence of gold, but also appears to lead practically exactly beneath the garden shaft. Is it possible that, after the garden shaft renovation is finished a couple of weeks from now, the team will be able to gain access to the legendary treasure that people have been searching for since 1795? As the garden shaft reconstruction continues, Rick Legina, Craig Tester, and the rest of the team investigate another man-made feature that they feel could help solve the Oak Island mystery. After obtaining results from geoscientist Jeremy Church's recent magnetic study, which revealed a number of probable metallic anomalies. The crew emptied the marsh and started excavating in the northeastern portion. Although no metal objects have been discovered as of yet, Rick and members of the team were taken aback when they discovered a ramp of stones that they believe is connected to the so-called paved area, a massive stone feature discovered in 2019 and scientifically dated to 1200 AD. The team is now looking for other indications that will help them establish not only the use of the feature, but also whether it is tied to something valuable. While activities continue in the money pit and swamp, Jack Begley is working with metal detection professional Gary Drayton at Lot 5 on the island's west side. This year, after purchasing Lot 5, Rick, Marty, and the team immediately made a couple of the greatest historical discoveries in Oak Island treasure hunt history. These consist of a stone structure that may age back to the exact same era as the garden shaft, remnants that could be more than four centuries old, and half of a Roman coin dated as early as 300 BC. Gary Drayton and Jack Begley discovered a possibly interesting relic on Lot 5 on the western side of Oak Island, a potential lead token discovered on Lot 5. Trade tokens, which originated almost 2,000 years ago in ancient Rome, were coin-like items composed of various metals and even non-metallic materials and issued by independent organizations rather than authorized governments to be used in place of approved currency. Although numerous societies have produced their own versions of trade tokens throughout history, might Gary Drayton be accurate in his belief that this trade token is related to the Roman coin discovered on Lot 5 earlier this year? But if so, who took them to Oak Island? Following the uncovering on Lot 5, 
Gary and Jack speak with Rick Legina, Craig Tester, and archaeologist Laird Niven in the Interpretive Center. After cleaning the artifact to identify its structure, Laird will scan it for 24 hours with the team's X-ray fluorescence instrument. By releasing non-destructive radiation, the XRF machine is able to determine the elements contained in an object. The next morning, while the garden shaft rebuilding begins, Rick and Marty Legina have gathered the rest of their crew in the war room for a discussion with researchers Judy Rudabush and Emiliano Sacchetti. Rick has arranged for Emiliano to meet with him to present fresh data, which he believes might assist in clarifying their true origins in light of the most recent finds made on the island, such as the stone ramp that could potentially be related to the 12th century paved area in the swamp and the breathtaking artifacts from Lot 5. In 1970, an incredible document was unearthed in the records of a medieval church in Cremona, Italy. The Cremona document, composed of maps, ciphers, and journal entries, is thought to have been created in the late 12th century by Ralph de Soudelet, a respected leader of the Knights Templar. In accordance with his first-hand account, de Soudley, along with others in the Christian military order, found precious religious valuables in Jerusalem during the Crusades including the golden menorah from King Solomon's original temple and the Holy Grail, which were then smuggled to Saborga, Italy, before they were shipped across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. After more than 150 years of service to the Catholic Church, Pope Clement V and King Philip IV collaborated to abolish and persecute the Templar Order in 1307. Despite the charge of heresy, many believe the underlying motive for the defection was an attempt to take their holy treasures. Many knights were imprisoned, tortured, and killed. Nevertheless, it is thought that some survived and fled with the remnants of their huge riches to several European countries, including Portugal, Scotland, England, and Italy, before potentially returning to North America. Now in the war room, Italian researcher Emiliano Sacchetti just provided Rick, Marty, Craig, and three team members with material indicating that the Knights Templar, a medieval order, may have made several trips to Oak Island to hide their valuables. Is it practical that Knights Templar members were responsible for the Oak Island mystery? Could this explain the team's old discoveries, such as the 12th century paved area in the swamp, the Roman half coin, and the 14th century lead cross? If that's the case, what may be the basis for all the gold trace evidence discovered in the money pit? Later that day, Rick, Marty, and Alex Legina were requested to join Laird Niven on Lot 5, near the lead token and Roman coin. They will look into a mysterious facility that Laird recalls the late Robert Young, the property's previous owner, showing him about 20 years ago. Although little has become known about the history of Lot 5, it was used as farmland in the early 19th century, shortly after the money pit was discovered in 1795. Robert Young bought it from his friend Fred Nolan in 1996, and during the next two decades, he discovered a number of historic relics, including 14th century coins, before passing away in 2020. Is it possible that the 19th century fence homesteaders were the only ones who constructed these round stone features? Or may it precede the finding of the money pit and be linked to other recent historical discoveries in the area? As another day begins on Oak Island, Rick Legina, Craig Tester, and Oak Island Operations Manager Scott Barlow gather at the Money Pit for a report on the garden shaft reconstruction. Exactly two years ago, Rick and other team members discovered pieces of wooden cargo barrels in the marsh when researching near the Stone Path or likely Ship's Wharf. Carmen Lega, a blacksmithing expert, studied them and concluded that they could be four centuries older than the Money Pit discovery. Is it possible that this barrel hoop discovered approximately 70 feet deep in the garden shaft, is as ancient as the ones found in the swamp, or maybe even older. If true, what type of cargo did it once hold and continues to patiently wait to be discovered deeper into the structure? Craig Tester, Jack Begley, Gary Drayton, Laird Niven, and Billy Gerhardt arrive at the northeastern portion of the swamp, while development on the garden shaft in the money pit area proceeds. They are keen to keep up their examination of the stone ramp uncovered one week ago, which the team believes is linked to the 800-year-old stone paved area. Jack Begley spotted a fascinating and perhaps vital clue when studying the odd stone ramp in the swamp's northeast part, a probable hand-cut piece of wood. Over the last five years, the crew has discovered not only bits of cargo barrels, but also timber fragments from enormous sailing vessels. 
Is it feasible that Jack Begley has discovered an additional finding on the stone ramp near the 800-year-old paved area that will enable the team to figure out why they were built? Because the crew believes they have reached the sea horizon or the natural layer of ground dirt, they appear to have discovered the boundary of this segment of the strange stone ramp structure. The following afternoon, while operations in the garden shaft continued, Rick and Marty Legina, together with Craig Tester and Jack Begley, met in the interpretive center with archaeometallurgy's Emma Culligan. Emma is now ready to provide her preliminary research of the object's content and likely geographical place of origin, having conducted an extended X-ray fluorescence scan of the odd lead disc discovered two days ago on Lot 5. Emma Culligan, an archaeometallurgist at Oak Island Interpretive Center, recently presented an unexpected scientific result with the staff. The lead artifact unearthed two days earlier on Lot 5 could have come from the Middle East or numerous locations of Europe, including Italy. Is it conceivable that the lead artifact found on Lot 5 originated in Italy? If so, might it be related to the Roman coin discovered earlier this year, as well as supporting scholars Zena Halpern and Emiliano Sacchetti's opinion that Knights Templar members were involved in the Oak Island mystery? A successful week passed by. After another great week on Oak Island, Rick, Marty, Craig, and their team are more optimistic than ever that the findings they continue to make will soon disclose the solutions to a 228-year-old riddle. But as they dug further, could they be missing out on a treasure of biblical proportions? Perhaps it is only a matter of time and their ability to evade a lethal curse that will tell. An interesting new day in the search of brothers Rick and Marty Legina and their crew to uncover the Oak Island Museum's 228-year-old mystery has begun. And in the famed Money Pit area, the anticipation of a breakthrough finding has never been bigger as Duma Contracting Limited personnel struggle to wrap up the reconstruction of the garden shaft, an 82-foot deep feature. When Rick, Marty and partner Craig Tester obtained unexpected results from the scientific study of wood samples earlier this year, showing a construction date as early as 1735, it upended the basic notion that the garden shaft was merely a 19th century searcher construct. This startling discovery raised the possibility of a link to the first money pit. Even more fascinating results were obtained from further testing on wood samples that were lowered to depths of 55 and 58 feet in the shaft. A new development has heightened the excitement as the team waits impatiently to discover what lies beneath the garden shaft. The team discovered a tunnel that was around 95 feet deep while excavating in the 20 by 20 foot region known as the Baby Blob, where hydrogeologist Dr. Fred Michael and geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner believe the Money Pit treasure vault may be located between 80 and 120 feet beneath. This tunnel, which leads remarkably almost straight beneath the garden shaft, adds a fascinating new layer to the complex puzzles that still remain to be solved on Oak Island. The idea of this connected network excites us about the potentially groundbreaking discoveries the team may make in the future. While the garden shaft is being rebuilt in the Money Pit area, Rick Legina, Billy Gerdart, and metal detector expert Gary Drayton plan to undertake another big operation in the northeastern portion of the triangle-shaped swamp. Rick and team members discovered what seemed to be a stone ramp a couple of weeks ago while looking for a probable metal object reported during a magnetometry study, a ramp that could connect to the mystery paved region, which has been dated as early as 1200 AD. Rick, Billy, and Gary are now trying to figure out if the ramp is indeed an extension of the paved area, as well as if anything valuable is buried there. The following afternoon, Rick joins his brother Marty and the rest of the team members in the war room for a much-anticipated conversation with numismatist Sandy Campbell. A few days ago, a mystery lead disc was discovered on Lot 5, close to where the researchers recovered an almost 2,000-year-old Roman coin earlier this year. In the Battle Rook, coin specialist Sandy Campbell has just offered a startling comment on the lead token discovered one week ago on Lot 5. He believes that it not merely dates back to the 5th century AD, but also has Roman origins, similar to the coin discovered in the same area this year. At the request of researcher Gretchen Cornwall, Marty, Alex Legina, and Charles Barkhouse traveled to Royston, England early this year to investigate Royston Cave, a location with a fascinating past. This location, which was once a part of the Roman Empire more than 1,500 years ago, became significant in the 12th and 14th centuries as a stronghold for the Knights Templar. 
It is said that the Christian military order, the Knights Templar, had hidden priceless holy artifacts on Oak Island. In light of this historical background, the discovery of a Roman token and half coin on Lot 5 earlier this year presents some interesting questions. Could these relics offer more proof for the startling theory that the Knights Templar were actually connected to Oak Island? Concurrently, work on restoring the Money Pit area's garden shaft is still ongoing. Alex Legina goes back to Lot 5 on the northern part of the island with archaeologist Laird Niven. Their attention is still on examining a bewildering stone formation roughly where the supposed Roman token and half coin were found earlier. The goal is to ascertain whether the stone structure was created by farmers in the 19th century or if it originated much earlier, which would add even more history to Oak Island's complex historical fabric. Meanwhile, the Oak Island crew keeps going their activities in the Money Pit, and on Lot 5, Rick, Gary, and Billy return to the triangle-shaped marsh to excavate more parts of the presumed man-made stone ramp. Rick, Billy, and Gary have relocated a few yards northeast from their last search position, and they are digging in drier earth to see if the ramp connects the 800-year-old paved area to the neighboring stone pathway, as well as if it includes any crucial clues or riches. A little horseshoe discovered on the stone slope in the triangle-shaped marsh. If so, was it just tossed here, or perhaps it dripped during the feature's construction? Could Gary be right, that this shoe belongs to a horse that arrived at Oak Island by a large sailing vessel? If so, could it be connected to the various ship fragments discovered in the marsh over the previous several tiers, or the cargo barrel pieces discovered in this location, which blacksmithing specialist Carmen Legg thinks date back to the 15th century? As the team from Dumas Contracting Limited starts the final stage of restoration in the garden shaft, Billy Gerhardt and Gary Drayton meet with blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg in the research center. They are excited to hear Carmen's opinion on the horseshoe discovered one day ago on the stone ramp in the marsh. Carmen Legge, a blacksmithing expert at the Oak Island Investigation Center, recently made a startling claim that the horseshoe discovered some time ago on the stone ramp in the marsh could date back four centuries before the discovery of the money pit. While exploring Alcoedao de Serra, Portugal, where the Knights Templar were believed to have kept a fortress between the 12th and 16th centuries, Rick Legina and members of the crew saw a Roman route substantially identical to the one uncovered in the swamp in 2020. Could Billy Gerhardt's theory that this horseshoe is somehow tied to the stone road be correct? If so, may it in addition to clarify exactly how the Roman coin and token ended up on Oak Island, but also provide another important clue in determining who was behind the 207-year-old mystery. Back on Lot 5, as Gary and Billy wrap up their discussion with Carmen Lega, archaeologists Laird Niven and Alex Legina continue their inquiry into the mystery stone feature. Alex and Laird will explore the structure's circumference with a steel rod to see if there are any additional layers of stone hidden beyond the outside margins. And now, Alex Legina has recently discovered something amazing about the round stone depression on Lot 5, which is located on Oak Island's western side. This attribute has the same 13-foot diameter as the original Money Pit, which Daniel McGinnis and two pals uncovered on the island's eastern edge in 1795. Curiously, it was previously characterized as a circular pit covered in stones. Is it feasible that this feature was developed as a prototype for the construction of the Money Pit, which is more than a half mile away? Or, given recent finds such as the Roman coin and barter token, is it possible that the stone-lined pit on Lot 5 contains a thing far more valuable, hidden deeper underground? On the following morning, Charles Barkhouse arrives in the Money Pit region after being notified to a significant issue affecting the reconstruction of the garden shaft at an approximate depth of around 78 feet, only 4 feet from the structure's bottom. Is it possible that the fracture in the original shaft is related to the tunnel, which is thought to run beneath it at a depth of approximately 95 feet? a tunnel leading from the adjacent baby blob or a treasure zone. Now, after meeting with Oak Island historian Doug Crowell and undertaking more research in Italy, Emiliano has put together what he hopes will be a particularly remarkable presentation. In the war room, Italian researchers Emiliano Sacchetti and Doug Crowell have just informed Rick, Marty, Craig, and the rest of the research group that a created by humans cave system near Osimo, Italy, used by Knights Templar members between the 12th and 14th centuries, matches the exact design of the 14th century lead cross that was discovered on Oak Island in 2017. The Leginas and their team's mission to solve the 228-year-old Oak Island mystery 
is once again taking them thousands of miles across the ocean. Will their journey lead to a bombshell that proves who reached Oak Island decades ago? While the crew searches old sites and archives for clues, digging on the island is going to keep uncovering what previous visitors may have hidden deep down. The cool North Atlantic autumn season has come on Oak Island. However, brothers Rick and Marty Legina, along with the Dig Fellowship, are more determined than ever to make a significant breakthrough finding in the Money Pit area and unravel a treasure quest that began in 1795. After nearly three months of tireless work, representatives from Dumas Contracting Limited have almost wrapped up the reconstruction of the mysterious 82-foot deep feature known as the Garden Shaft, a possible early 18th century construct that has not only resulted in high trace amounts of gold within both wood and water samples, but it additionally sets above a believed tunnel at a depth of about 95 feet that runs due west straight into the so-called Baby Blob. An area where, according to water tests carried out through previously sunk boreholes, the largest levels of silver and gold have been identified thus far. Now Dumas is striving as hard as possible to safely complete the dig and discover not only what lies at the bottom, but also to reach the putative treasure tunnel lying beneath it before winter forces the team to suspend their search activities until next spring. Marty Legina joins archaeologists Laird Niven and Helen Sheldon on Lot 5, which lies on the island's western side, as they investigate a peculiar pit filled in stones. Although the feature's design is unusual for reasons that are obvious, it is located in an identical general location, where the team recently uncovered a half coin and a lead barter token, both of which are thought to be in excess of 1,500 years old and of Roman provenance. And one week ago, when Laird and Marty's son Alex measured the feature's diameter, they were surprised to learn that it fit the precise proportions of the first money pit when it was discovered in 1795. Rick Lagina, his nephews Alex and Peter, Oak Island historian Doug Crowell and researcher Corjan Moll have arrived in Camerano, Italy, where they are meeting with researchers Emiliano Sacchetti and Alberto Recanatini. Emiliano invited the team to visit the strange Camerano caves, building on data supplied with them by Rick's late friend Zena Halpern in 2016. A system of man-made underground labyrinths dating back more than 2,500 years and featuring a part that is fashioned nearly identically to the 14th century lead cross that had been discovered on Oak Island in 2017. Although the town of Camerano, Italy was founded in 1198, the Pizzani are thought to have established the underground cave system in the 6th century BC. Around 290 BC, the territory was incorporated into the Roman Empire, but between the 12th and 14th centuries, it was reconstructed as a fortress for the Knights Templar who altered parts of the cave system for motives that are unknown. The Knights Templar organization has been surrounded in mystery since its inception in Jerusalem in 11 and 18. They were established on the original site of King Solomon's temple to safeguard Christian holdings in the Holy Land during the Crusades. They amassed extraordinary wealth by creating one of the world's first banking institutions. However, in 1306, they were disbanded by the Catholic Church and prosecuted by the King of France for supposed heresy. A few believe the Templars were targeted because they possessed many rare holy items. Those hallowed jewels have never been discovered, and experts like Corian and Emiliano believe that remaining members of the order carried them throughout Europe before burying them in the New World on Oak Island. Rick Legina and members of the Oak Island team are searching for a portion of a 2,500-year-old cave system believed to have been reconstructed by Knights Templar members in the 14th century, and that aligns with the exact design of the 14th century lead cross discovered on Oak Island in 2017. Early on this year, Rick Corjan and Charles Barkhouse drove 59 miles southwest of Oak Island to Liverpool, Nova Scotia, and there they saw a remarkably comparable carving back on Oak Island. Metal detectorist Gary Drayton and surveyor Steve Guptill accompany Billy Gerhardt into the triangle-shaped swamp. They're continuing their attempts to excavate a presumed stone ramp to see if it gradually connects the stone route that runs along the swamp's eastern edge with the large stone-paved structure in the heart of the brackish bog, which has been scientifically dated to as early as 1200 AD. While researching a suspected man-made stone ramp in the northern section of the Oak Island Marsh, Billy Gerhardt, Gary Drayton, and Steve Guptill discovered a possibly critical clue. Over the last few years, the team has discovered not just solid evidence that the marsh was once a vacant harbor, 
but also that the stone path or ship's wharf discovered in 2020 may have been utilized to dock a huge sailing vessel. If Gary is true in claiming that he, Billy, and Steve discovered additional evidence of a ship on the alleged stone ramp, could this imply that the ramp, which may be interconnected to the 800-year-old paved area, was built to convey something of great value off a ship to Oak Island? The next morning, as Bicky Gerhardt manages the hydrovac execution to uncover more of the assumed stone ramp in the swamp on Oak Island, nearly 3,700 miles to the east, in the little city of Osimo, Italy. Researcher Emiliano Sacchetti and Professor Fabrizio Bartoli, a historian and modern-day member of the Knights Templar, comply with with Rick Lagina and other members of the team, just outside an ancient site known as the Grotta Simonetti. The Grotta Simonetti, situated barely five miles southwest of Camerano, was built over 2,000 years ago. Around 1160 AD, it was restored as a fortress for the Knights Templar, However, following the order's disintegration in the early 14th century, it is claimed that its remaining members used it as a hidden hideaway. Rick, together with his nephews Alex and Peter, visited a 14th century Templar prison in Dom, France in 2017. They were shown a variety of carvings created by the members of the Templar order during their persecution, including one that was an identical match to the lead cross discovered only a week later on Oak Island. Alex Legina and his cousin Peter Fornetti uncovered an old engraving thought to have been carved by Knights Templar members in the Grotta Simonetti cave system in Osima, Italy, which matches one found on the H plus O stone discovered on Oak Island in the 1929s. Is it possible that Peter and Alex discovered a symbol in the Grotta Simonetti representing the precious treasures that many believe the Templar order smuggled out of Europe between the 12th and 14th centuries? If true, May the H plus O stone provide a crucial hint as to where they are today. The next morning, back on Oak Island, as the garden shaft is being rebuilt in the Money Pit area, Craig Tester, Billy Gerhardt, and Laird Niven gather at the swamp with geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner to inspect the stone ramp, which has now been cleansed of water and muck. Dr. Spooner has discovered a stick beneath the ramp, which not only provides significant proof that the structure is man-made, but may also allow him to determine when it was built. Later that afternoon, Marty and the crew assemble in the war room for a much-anticipated video conference with Rick, Doug, Alex, and Peter to discuss their quest for clues in Italy. As a fresh day dawns on Oak Island, Marty Legina and Charles Barkhouse arrive at the Money Pit region to check on the garden shaft's reconstruction. Could there be a swamped structure about 80 feet deep just outside the garden shaft that is causing harm to the existing construction? If so, may it be tied to one of the mythical flood tunnels linked to the money pit, implying that the crew is close to the fabled treasure vault? As operations continue on Oak Island, nearly 3,700 miles east of Rome, Italy, Rick Lagina, along with other team members and Italian researcher Emiliano Sacchetti, meet with author, archaeoastronomer, and astrophysicist Professor Adriano Gaspani. Professor Adriano Gaspani, who is an archaeoastronomer near Rome, Italy, has shared with Rick Legina, along with other members of the Oak Island team, that, based on historical alignments of specific stars in the night sky, he believes Nolan's Cross was built around 800 years ago. If Professor Gaspani is correct, and Nolan's Cross, like the massive paved area in the swamp, was built around 1200 AD, could it provide evidence to support the late Zena Halpern's belief that Knights Templar members made repeated visits to Oak Island between the 12th and 14th centuries to hide their sacred treasures. For almost two centuries, dedicated investigators have worked to uncover the answers to the Oak Island enigma. Is it conceivable that the Leginas and their team are currently unearthing the truth approximately 4,000 miles away? The search for clues continues, but is the ultimate proof hidden at the bottom of the money pit, protected by a lethal curse? For brothers Rick and Marty Legina, their colleague Craig Tester, and the entirety of their crew, the start of another day on Oak Island means renewed excitement for a significant breakthrough discovery that could help answer a 228-year-old riddle. Although the harsh North Atlantic winter is quickly approaching, the repair of the garden shaft in the Money Pit area is nearing conclusion, which means that a legendary treasure that people have been hunting for since 1795 may soon be within their grasp. It's been five months since Dumas Contracting Limited personnel began reconstructing this 82-foot-deep, decrepit feature, 
which, owing to scientific testing of wood and water samples, has been shown to contain high trace levels of gold. However, it looks like it to be sitting atop a tunnel 95 feet deep that runs due west towards the so-called Baby Blob, where water sampling and multiple boreholes has indicated that the fabled Money Pit treasure chest may be buried. Following their completion of specialized safety training, Charles Barkhouse is assessing the structure's nearly completed bottom part, or set, to assist the crew in determining how the garden shaft is related to the potential treasure tunnel beneath it. As the garden shaft rebuilding in the Money Pit area progresses, Rick Legina, his nephews Alex and Peter, Doug Crowell, and researcher Emiliano Sacchetti confer with numismatist Umberto Maruzzi in Rome, Italy. Rick and his team have spent the past week exploring ancient sites to investigate the late Zena Halpern's theory that between the 12th and 14th centuries, participants of the medieval Christian order known as the Knights Templar, transported, considered sacred, religious preserves from Italy and other European strongholds to Oak Island. To date, they have discovered several Templar carvings in ancient cave systems found on or around the island. And remarkably, one of those places, located in the village of Camerano, has a labyrinth that matches the exact design of the 14th century lead cross discovered at Smith's Cove in 2017. Today, the team asked Umberto to study the Roman half coin found earlier this year on Lot 5, as well as another metal relic discovered on Lot 7, to see whether his results could aid to corroborate Zena Hallowern's astounding theory. From ancient Rome to the medieval period in Europe, the worth of silver and gold coins was determined by weight. To prevent infringement, merchants would use trade weights composed of non-precious metals as a standard for determining the genuine value of coins. If Umberto Maruzzi is true and this trade weight dates back around 1,000 years, might it be a clue supporting Zena Halpern's theory that members of the Templar Order first visited Oak Island in the late 12th century? Back on Oak Island, Jack Begley visits Lot 5, located on the island's western side where archaeologist Laird Niven continues his methodical excavation of a mystery circular stone structure. While the significance of the stone-covered depression is unidentified, the fact that it has a 13-foot diameter connecting that of the original money pit when it was uncovered in 1795 and is located in the exact same location where the Roman coin and barter token were discovered, leads the team to believe it may be a critical clue in solving the Oak Island mystery. Craig Tester, Billy Gerhardt, Steve Guptel, and Gary Drayton are excavating in the midst of the triangle-shaped marsh as Laird and Jack continue their inquiry on Lot 5. After verifying the discovery of a stone ramp one week ago that connects the 800-year-old paved area to a stone pathway running across the swamp's eastern border, the Oak Island team is currently trying to unearth a large, potentially metallic object discovered during a magnetometer survey earlier this year. While looking for a metallic object, potentially buried more than 10 feet deep in the heart of the triangle-shaped marsh, Craig Tester and other team members discovered what they think to be a new piece of the vast 800-year-old stone-paved structure. The next morning, Craig Tester travels to the marsh with geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner to investigate the newly discovered stone-paved feature. Over the last few years, the crew has discovered various pieces of antique vessels for sailing, as well as parts of cargo barrels, all of which are estimated to be 600 years or older. Could Dr. Spooner be true in claiming that the paved area in the swamp's center and the stone ramp at its eastern side were utilized centuries ago to transfer something valuable to Oak Island? Meanwhile, around 4,000 miles to the east, researcher Emiliano Sacchetti made arrangements for Rick Legina and other team members to have a conversation with Professor Andrea during Robilanf at the American University of Rome. With nearly 40 years of expertise as an author and educator, Professor Dia Robilant has written extensively about pre-15th century European voyages to the New World. Prince Henry Sinclair was a Scottish aristocrat, military commander, and explorer. Parts say he gave asylum to and joined the Knights Templar after their persecution in France in the 14th century, and subsequently assisted them in transporting part of their wealth to the New World in 1398. The Templar Knight Prince Henry Sinclair, who some believe buried priceless religious treasures on Oak Island, accompanied the Italian explorers Antonio and Niccolo Zeno on their voyage to the New World in the late 14th century, according to documents recently presented by Professor Andrea de Robilant at the American University in Rome, Italy. 
Returning to Oak Island, Dr. Ian Spooner makes his initial assessment of the circular depression filled in stones by joining Craig Tester and other team members on Lot 5. Should Dr. Spooner be right, does this building provide proof that Prince Henry Sinclair's supposed expedition to Oak Island in the latter part of the 14th century actually happened? Treasure seekers on the northern side of Oak Island uncovered a big boulder in the 1920s that had several mysterious carvings on it. They dug beneath it, thinking it signified the site of treasure hidden beneath the surface and demolished it with explosives. Beneath the enormous boulder, nothing was discovered. But may the shard known as the H plus O stone, which showed a cross encircled by four dots, actually have been a crucial hint that priceless Templar relics are concealed on Oak Island. In that case, would that account for the strong traces of gold and other metals found well below the surface in the money pit area? Masonic symbols like triangles, crosses, and the letter G, which represents the divine creator, have also been found all over the island. Is it possible that Alex Legina has just discovered more evidence that these organizations are directly connected? Many believe that the discrete community known as the Freemasons evolved from the Templar order after its breakdown by the Catholic Church in the 14th century. However, since the money pit was discovered in 1795, Freemasons have been involved in nearly every organized company of treasure hunters that has tried to solve the mystery. If so, does that also explain the over 200-year search for what the Freemasons have been trying to find on Oak Island? Oak Island is experiencing a historic time. The restoration of the 82-foot-deep garden shaft is finished after more than five months of non-stop work by Dumas contracting limited employees. The crew will start a new probe drilling operation in the coming week to search for signs of precious metals outside the building and a tunnel that goes to the Baby Blob, also known as the alleged treasure zone, at a depth of about 95 feet. Meanwhile, Marty Legina is getting ready to descend into the structure for the first time in order to examine it. Rick, Marty, and the other members of the Fellowship are unfazed in their pursuit of discovering the long-kept mysteries of Oak Island, even in the face of the rapidly approaching North Atlantic winter. More convincing proof that something of historic proportions might be buried deep in the money pit has been unearthed after thoroughly searching the island and undertaking another arduous trek across the ocean. And now that the garden shaft is finished, they may finally have the means to get it back. Every day brings fresh chances and hope for the Rick brothers, Marty Legina, and their group to create an important and historic invention. They are currently in a race against time to find whatever is beneath the garden shaft in the money pit area and will solve the 228-year-old treasure mystery, but the impending North Atlantic winter will soon force them to suspend their operations until next spring. Even though there were strong traces of gold found in water and wood samples obtained during the reconstruction of the early 18th century shaft, the completed shaft, which is nearly 82 feet deep, did not contain the treasures that had been sought after since 1795. However, the crew may have found the largest concentrations of gold and silver during their whole quest for the Oak Island treasure above the tunnel, which they found at a depth of about 95 feet while digging nearby in the so-called Baby Blob. Dumas Contracting Limited representatives are performing a probe drilling operation from the garden shaft's bottom in an attempt to validate the tunnel's existence and retrieve any potential materials it may hold. As the probe drilling procedure in the garden shaft commences, Rick, Marty, Legina, and the team members convened in the war room to talk about the amazing trip that Rick, his nephews Alex and Peter, and Doug Crowell recently took to different parts of Italy. Over the course of the previous two weeks, Rick and the team were taken by researcher Emiliano Sacchetti to a number of locations that were known to have functioned as strongholds for members of the Knights Templar, a medieval order. There are also many who think that during the 12th and 14th centuries, the Templars concealed priceless holy artifacts in these castles and then smuggled them to the New World. They visited a cave system in the historic town of Camerano and saw the numerous Templar engravings that have also been discovered in the past on Oak Island sand. Remarkably, the design of the 14th century lead cross that was discovered at Smith's Cove back in 2017 matched the cave system. But the most important finding they made might have been in the Santa Maria Nuova Church in Viterbo. There, Alex saw markings on a pillar that he thought might be directly related to the enigmatic H plus O stone, a carved boulder found on Oak Island's northern shore in 1920. Alex then proposed a theory that when they were in the church, they saw an inscription that said HIC, or more specifically, HIC, 
which is Latin for here. However, if you change these three letters, H-I-C, by adding a line to the middle of the I to create a plus sign and changing the C to an O, you will obtain the H plus O stone. Does Alex Legina have a point that there's a chance Oak Island harbors a hallowed relic related to the Knights Templar, as indicated by the engravings on the H plus O stone? If so, how might the high trace amounts of gold and silver found in the Money Pit location be explained? Rick Legina joins the other team members at the triangle-shaped swamp for his first look at the mysterious stone ramp that was fully unearthed two weeks ago. While Scott Barlow gets back to the money pit to check on the developments of the probe drilling operation in the garden shaft, resulting from their meeting in the war room. A cobblestone walkway that emerges from the brackish bog and leads to a location on the island is connected to the expansive 800-year-old stone pavement area by a ramp. Rick, Marty, and the other team members are investigating the enigmatic stone ramp in the Oak Island Swamp when they learn that the tunnel that was thought to run beneath the garden shaft in the Money Pit area may have recently been discovered. The Dumas team will now install PVC tubing inside the drill hole to guarantee that it does not collapse while they examine the suspected tunnel with a high-definition camera. On Lot 5, on the island's western side, Jack Begley meets up with archaeologist Laird Niven as the team gets ready to explore the potential tunnel beneath the garden shaft. Not only does the circular stone structure draw attention for its historical artifacts, but it also commands fascination with its precisely measured 13-foot diameter. It is located adjacent to the area where the team recently unearthed an intriguing potential lead barter token and an impressively preserved 1,600-year-old Roman coin. This size, which matches the dimensions of the original money hole discovered in 1795, gives their study an additional level of intrigue. The major objective is still to carefully search for any faint indications or hard-to-find evidence that could reveal the enigmatic beginnings of this historic structure. As the group continues its investigation, they concentrate on the 17th and 18th centuries, which are known for the extensive usage of redware, a type of earthenware pottery painstakingly made from burnt clay in both Europe and North America. This historical background raises an interesting question. May the redware pottery's existence act as a physical link, proving the stone structure's existence before the significant money pit discovery? While everyone is reflecting on the past, Rick, Marty, and his committed team continue to thoroughly examine Lot 5. At the same time, focus is on a hidden mystery, a tunnel that is rumored to lie around 91 feet below the garden shaft in the area of the money pit. The investigation is made more exciting by the whisper that this tunnel leads straight to the coveted treasure zone, or the elusive baby blob. The excitement is further heightened by recent discoveries made by the crew, which highlight visual evidence suggesting a potential wooden structure. These discoveries raise the intriguing possibility that, despite the difficulties presented by clay and sediment, the team may have discovered a carefully constructed, man-made tunnel, another piece in the complex puzzle of this historical mystery. Less than two weeks left before the Oak Island team's search efforts must be temporarily suspended as winter's icy embrace tightens its grasp. The gravity of the situation forces them to use every resource at their disposal to solve the mysteries hidden in the mysterious depths. The crew carefully spends the next two days covering the excavation site with urethane in order to get ready for the next stage of the drilling operation. The purpose of this peculiar crystalline substance is to give the drill bit more traction which could lead to a breakthrough into the suspected wooden tunnel that is buried beneath the surface. It was carefully picked for this purpose. Amidst these technical arrangements, Rick, Marty, and Alex set out on a new day of discovery, meeting at Lot 5, the heart of their archaeological efforts. Laid Niven and Jack Begley, two archaeologists, continue to examine the round rock structure in an attempt to uncover elusive hints that could reveal its historical significance. An intriguing twist to their quest comes from a 2016 historical artifact, a purported 14th century map of Oak Island. This map, which was given to the late scholar and researcher Zena Halpern, is thought to have been created by Templar Knights and shows well-known locations in French. Famous features like the Marsh, the Stone Triangle, and the Money Pit are among them. However, the story has taken a fascinating turn recently. The crew focuses on the hole under the hatch, a particular location on the western portion of the island, after consulting the medieval map. 
Their curiosity has been aroused by this unusual spot on the map, and they are wondering if it hides a secret shaft or tunnel entrance. Despite the difficulties presented by Winter, the Oak Island team never gives up on their mission to reveal the secrets hidden beneath the island's legendary surface. They do this by navigating a maze of time, technology, and historical nuances. Is Jack right when he suggests that the hole under the hatch could be the round stone construction on Lot 5 that fits the circumference of the old money pit? Rick, Marty, and the other team members have convened in the war room to participate in a video conference with Craig Tester and Dr. Chris McFarlane, a geochemistry professor at the University of New Brunswick, while Laird Niven pursues his inquiry on Lot 5. A scientific investigation of the lead barter token discovered earlier this year on Lot 5, close to the enigmatic circle stone feature, has recently been finished by Dr. McFarlane. The method of eliminating minute samples from a lead artifact's surface using powerful lasers is known as laser ablation. Following an analysis of these samples, the precise isotope levels of the lead are found. This information can be used to pinpoint the artifact's origins in terms of both time and place. Dr. Chris McFarlane, a geochemist, has just given the Oak Island team an incredible report in the war room. The lead cross that was discovered at Smith's Cove in 2017 and the lead isotope values identified in the barter token recovered in Lot 5 earlier this year match, according to laser ablation testing. This indicates that it originated in southern France and was most likely made in the 14th century. Is it possible that the researchers at Oak Island have discovered two crucial pieces of evidence that indicate a visitor to the island in the 14th century was of French descent? If so, may there be a connection between them and the stone feature on Lot 5? Perhaps even supporting the theory put forth by the late Zena Halpern that the map was drawn by Templar Knights. Later on in the day, Jack Begley, Billy Gethart, Steve Guptil, Gary Dryaton, and Alex Legina returned to the marsh in the shape of a triangle to continue looking for clues on the enigmatic stone ramp, a potential handle, and perhaps from a big sailing ship? If so, is it connected to the numerous other ship fragments and cargo barrels the team has discovered in the swamp over the course of several years, and maybe provide more proof that something extremely valuable was loaded onto Oak Island using the stone ramp and the 800-year-old paved area? The following morning, Rick, Marty, and the remainder of the crew return to the Money Pit region as representatives from Dumas Contracting Limited continue their attempt to drill into the alleged tunnel some 10 feet below the garden shaft, a tunnel that might go straight to the baby blob or a possible treasure area. The knowledgeable crew at Dumas Contracting Limited painstakingly continues drilling into what is thought to be a 92-foot deep tunnel beneath the Money Pit location as the exploration approaches a critical turning point. This tunnel is strategically located slightly below the bottom of the garden shaft and may reveal important findings. Excavation is still underway, but the possibility that its trajectory could continue westward into the prized Baby Blob area, known for its profusion of gold and silver traces, adds another level of mystery to the work. But the group encounters a little roadblock in their quest to uncover Oak Island's mysteries. Despite its heroic efforts, the current 4-inch drill bit is not up to the demands of the task at hand. Realizing they need a stronger fix, the group decides to put a temporary stop to work and buy a 6-inch drill bit. This calculated action highlights Rick, Marty, Craig, and the team's methodical approach to overcoming technical obstacles and making sure they have the best resources available to reach the tunnel's interior. As the team realizes they might be only a few inches away from solving the puzzles that have baffled researchers for more than two centuries, the excitement mounts as they teeter on the verge of a possible breakthrough. Now that the excavation in the famed Money Pit has surpassed the 90-foot mark, it has become a symbolic turning point in Oak Island's ongoing search for lost riches. With every inch of drilling, they go closer to the finish of a voyage that reverberates through time fusing the present quest for the island's mysterious secrets with its rich historical legacy. And it might be a treasure more priceless and historic than anyone could have ever dreamed, considering all of the amazing hints that have been found throughout the island and once more throughout Europe. After over 10 years of unrelenting work, the Legina brothers Rick and Marty, along with their loyal colleague Craig Tester, and a dedicated team of interdisciplinary specialists may be close to solving the puzzling 228-year-old enigma of Oak Island. Standing in the well-known Money Pit region, 
agents for Dumas Contacting Limited, are about to launch a novel probe drilling project. This operation is carefully designed to descend to a depth of around 82 feet inside the finely detailed reconstruction of garden shaft. The main objective is to breach a suspected wooden tunnel that is positioned a little less than 10 feet below the surface. To make matters more intriguing is the notion that this tunnel runs straight west, all the way to the enigmatic location known as the Baby Blob. The excitement surrounding this project is increased even more by the results of water tests carried out in boreholes that have already been sunk, which provide strong evidence of significant levels of gold and silver traces. The scene is thus set for an engrossing journey into the depths of history, where the coming together of knowledge and technological progress promises to reveal the mysteries that have remained hidden for ages. Only a week ago, the group made its first attempt to use a four-inch diameter bit to drill into the elusive tunnel. Unfortunately, they were unsuccessful in their first attempt. Unfazed, the group has since acquired a far more durable six-inch diameter bit, and they hope that it will not only successfully navigate the tunnel's depths, but also unlock its secrets. Their job becomes even more urgent because the merciless North Atlantic winter will force the island's search and rescue efforts to end in less than a week. While the archaeologist Laird Niven and Marty Legina's sons Alexa Jack Begley and Rick continue to examine a circular depression carefully covered in large stones, the probe drilling operation inside the garden shaft on Lot 5 on the western side of the island is still in progress. The feature located on Lot 5 is particularly mysterious among the several ancient buildings that have been investigated on the western side of Oak Island. This circular depression poses interesting questions, situated close to other discoveries that include a 1,500-year-old Roman coin and a lead token that may be connected to the lead cross from the 14th century. Its 13-foot inner circle, which is identical to the original money pit, encourages Rick, Marty, and the gang to conjecture. Is this the mysterious hole under the hatch shown on an alleged 14th century map of Oak Island? As suggested by the late researcher Zena Halpern, who thought the map was drawn by members of the Knights Templar. Laird's theory begins to take on interest. Could they really be discovering remnants of a long-lost, enigmatic structure? The question remains as the team continues their intriguing investigation. What mysteries might be revealed in the nooks and crannies of these mysterious features? Later that morning, Rick, Marty, and Craig Tester met with the team in the war room for an important meeting. It was discovered in recent weeks in the northern section of the triangle-shaped wetland. It looks to be a deliberately constructed stone ramp. This ramp leads to a stone pathway that may lead to the elusive money pit, in addition to connecting an impressive 800-year-old paved area. Craig Tester makes a startling discovery during this crucial war room meeting. The recently discovered stone ramp in the swamp that links the large paved area with the cobblestone pathway may have been built as early as the late 15th century. A further degree of mystery stems from the possibility that this stone ramp corresponds temporally with the Stoke Road discovered in the southeast portion of the marsh two years earlier. The team's memory of seeing a similar stone road in Alcuedo da Serra, Portugal, during their excursions in 2021, enhances the significance of this discovery in the context of solving the Oak Island mystery. This Portuguese city presents an intriguing connection, having historically functioned as a stronghold for the Knights Templar between the 12th and the 17th centuries. The striking similarities between the stone constructions on Oak Island and those found at Alquidao da Serra suggest a possibly significant relationship and provide an enticing lead in the investigation into the secrets surrounding Oak Island's mysterious past. The following day is spent with the ongoing probe drilling process in the garden shaft while Marty and Alex Legina revisit Lot 5. Archaeologists Laird Niven, Miriam Amaralt, and Helen Sheldon meticulously study the puzzling stone feature, looking for new clues and potential riches. The stone depression raises the question of whether its construction is similar to the rock wall on Lot 26, which is nearly half a mile away. Adding to the mystery, the wall on Lot 26, which researcher Francisco Noguera believes to be of Portuguese origin, had charcoal dating back to the 15th century. The idea arises, does Rick and Marty's hypothesis concerning the connection of these features have merit? If so, may they be the work of the same people who created the stone ramp and road in the swamp? 
Rick and Marty Legina arrive at the Money Pit area later in the morning, eager to evaluate the status of the continuing probe drilling operation inside the garden shaft. The team is constantly on the verge of making connections that could reveal crucial details about Oak Island's enigmatic past, as each finding adds to the complexity of the island's story. With excitement building as the probe drilling operation approaches the estimated depth of the suspected tunnel, two important concerns remain unanswered. Can the crew locate the structure, and if so, can they break it to reveal its contents? Rick and Marty Legina, together with their group, believe they have drilled down to a possible tunnel beneath the garden shaft, which is thought to be about 93 feet deep and could go directly to the Money Pit treasure vault. In this crucial area, at the same time, metal detectorist Gary Drayton finds possible proof of precious metals at a depth of nearly 82 feet beneath the garden shaft. The question now stands. Could these signals be coming from the supposed tunnel that leads westward toward the mysterious baby blob? Or could Gary have found evidence of the fabled Oak Island riches in the ground just below the shaft's bottom? Excitement soon gives way to a melancholy reality. At this time of year, Dumas does not have the legal authorization to dig the pit any farther. Because they care about the project's success and the security of their group, Rick and Marty decide against taking a chance on exploring the possibly unstable earth below by trying to breach the shaft's bottom. This pivotal point in the Oak Island narrative is defined by the careful balancing act between the excitement of discovery and the cautious management of risks. The next morning, as Rick, Marty, and Craig get together with their fellowship members in the war room, there's an air of expectation. They've been searching relentlessly for months, and now they could be within feet of discovering Oak Island's mysteries. The treasure trove of information gathered throughout their tenacious search could provide answers to the puzzle's riddles and provide insight into its enigmatic beginnings. Geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner presented a noteworthy revelation during this year's last meeting. Freshwater sampling data from boreholes in the Money Pit region indicates that the elusive treasure may be found within a 15-foot radius below the garden shaft. Thinking back to previous studies, the group investigated an enigmatic well less than 100 feet away before examining the perspective wall from the 15th century on Lot 26. This well's construction dates back up to 900 years, which corresponds with the same era as the paved area in the marsh. It also included organic elements, which indicated the presence of silver during water testing. The team's resolve is strengthened by the convergence of these discoveries which also provide a thorough mosaic of proof as they get closer to discovering the mysteries that Oak Island has been keeping for generations. The complex pieces seem to be fitting together, providing a window into the rich history that surrounds this mysterious island. When Rick, his nephews Alex and Peter, and Doug Crowell consider the life-changing adventures they have been on over the last 10 years, none have captured their attention more than their latest trip to Italy, which ended just one month ago. When they visited Viterbo, which is the site of a medieval church that was formerly a Templar stronghold, they noticed a remarkable collection of carved symbols that resembled those that had been found on Oak Island throughout the years. Speaking with Professor Adriano Gaspani, an archaeoastronomer during their stay in Italy, was insightful. According to Gaspani's historical star alignments, Nolan's Cross, an enormous megalithic structure on Oak Island may have originated about 800 years ago. The team's study, which revealed an intricately formed cave system similar to the 14th century lead cross discovered on Oak Island in 2017, revealed a remarkable connection between the Templars and the ancient settlement of Camerano. For Rick, Marty, and Craig and their everlasting friendship, the quest to solve the world's greatest treasure mystery continues. While the elusive fabled wealth remains hidden after 228 years, the crew has accumulated strong evidence pointing to its existence and is eagerly awaiting rescue from the dark depths of the money pit. As they prepare for the next thrilling chapter of this gripping journey in the spring, one lingering question remains. Will Rick, Marty, and the team finally discover the ultimate answers, freeing themselves from Oak Island's enduring curse? The story progresses with tenacity, discovery, and an unflinching quest for the secrets that have escaped seekers for generations propelling the drama into unknown territory. We are all enthralled by Oak Island's charm, which is a compelling fusion of history and the unwavering search for riches.
This trip becomes a rewarding and intriguing adventure because of the mystery riddles that continue to be solved and the sheer joy that comes with each discovery. The team's exploration of Oak Island's past reveals a complex relationship between history and the search for lost treasures, which gives the story more depth and continues to captivate aficionados around the globe. Subscribe to the channel if you have enjoyed it so far.